Hey guys, so in this video I want to talk about my workflow and using AI instead of my terminal. For the longest time I had to kind of try different tools and different things just to figure out how to use AI correctly in my editor, my favorite editor, NeoVim. However, for the longest time I couldn't really find any useful tool or any any like integration that works really well. I tried Avante, I tried Code Companion, I tried Copilot. They're all good, but it just didn't really work the way I wanted. And because of that, I had to switch a little bit to use Cursor, which is okay. However, it's not NeoVim. My workflow had to change a lot, and um, they changed their pricing recently, and now it's a bit more expensive as well. So I'm back kind of to trying to figure out what to do with this. And recently, I noticed some companies are releasing some pretty cool tools for the CLI. Obviously, we have uh, Cloud Code, and also there's a bunch of other options now. So we have Warp, which is that terminal that everybody thought you have to authenticate to. <laughs> um, they added some, something similar to Cloud Code, so you can like essentially write your prompts or whatever inside of it, and it just talks to different APIs, and essentially it's an agentic terminal right now. It's pretty cool. I played a little bit with it, but it's still not there for me, or it's still like not very familiar, I would say. I feel like I just want to use something like Ghosty and some other tools. So as of now, I don't think I'm going to be trying Warp full-time, and so I'm kind of stuck between two options. There's Cloud Code, and this is obviously probably one of the best you can use. It's a terminal interface essentially to use uh, Anthropic API. So Cloud 4, Cloud Sonnet 4, or Opus. And this one is fantastic. It is developed by Anthropic, and you're probably gonna get the best experience out of this whole thing with them. It is, it could be expensive. Like you can probably pay like $100 or even $200 to fully use it and without having any like limitations. But also I found open code, which is kind of the latest um, thing out there. Open code is developed by a bunch of people that are pretty amazing and it's fully open source and it supports multiple models, which is a key thing here. Because right now, for example, cloud code supports all the anthropic stuff, right? And this is good and everything, but what if a month from now something new com comes up and we have to switch to a new thing? And most likely you have to switch to a new CLI tool as well. So something like open code, I can get used to how it works. And then if a new model comes up and maybe it's better than Cloud Sonnet, I can just switch the model inside of it. And it seems like this is like the right approach for me. I've been playing with it a little bit and I'm gonna show you how I've been using it as well. And the coolest thing about it actually is that the developers behind it, they use NeoVim. So the way they're building this is with NeoVim in mind. They want to make it as familiar as possible to NeoVim users. And not only it's open source, you know, you can just go and contribute to it, but you can also kind of chat with these people and you can connect with them and they're very kind of accessible on Twitter and GitHub and so many other places. All right, so let me show you how I've been using open code uh, with my terminal. But first, let's go to their docs and walk through a couple of stuff. And as you can see, this is the interface, it's pretty cool. And there's a couple ways you can install it with NPM and you can use also Homebrew, which I've been using as well. And there's a lot of commands here. And so first, actually, let's go to the intro here and scroll down. When you try to authenticate with open code auth login, there's a couple like um, providers you can use. I've been using Anthropic. And so with Anthropic, you can either use their API or like an account for like 100 or $200, the max one essentially for the best usage and this one will allow you to authenticate with either essentially i've been using the api just to kind of keep an eye on my usage it's been kind of going well and so when you authenticate with it it will and it will ask you for the api key and you essentially it will store it under this um file here so local share open code auth json now if you see some of their cli commands there's a ton of things here from um selecting models, authentication, so on and so forth. There's like modes as well. So you know how you have like, um, for example, in VS Code, you have the ask and then you have the edit, I think, or like agent. Uh, this is kind of similar. So you got like a plan mode and then the build mode, which the one will kind of build all the code for you. The plan is just gonna tell you what's gonna do, but it won't really write the code. And so to switch between the two, you can have just, uh, you can just press tab essentially. I guess the best way I can demo this is to show you. So here I have a pretty much empty project, so we can go inside of it and you see we have just 
um, an empty project. There's nothing here. And the way you can use this is you can just type in open code and press enter. And you see this interface. You can see already that this looks like a new Vim thing and it's pretty fantastic. So if you press like uh, slash here or backslash, you see all the options here. Um, there's so many things. You can even change the theme, by the way. I'm using the system, which kind of uh, looks good with the groove box I'm using. So you can do a lot of different things here. And if you want to change models, all you have to do is just backslash models and then pick whatever you want. So I'm using Anthropic and it's already kind of authenticated with an API key. But as you can see, there's so many ones here and you can pick whatever one you want to use. And then um, let's say you're typing here. There's another cool thing. Let's say, I don't know. Um, well, you can see here, actually, this is where we at, right? It's under the same project because I opened it in there. Now, if I'm here and want to type, for example, I don't know, write me a HTTP server that returns hello world or something, right? So you see here we have this option as well, editor. So if I press Control X, which in this case, it's like the prefix for them. So you have a prefix command uh, similar to Tmux or or I think they're calling it leader key here. You can just press Control X and then E, and it will open up the, the thing where you write your prompts essentially in your Vim or in your editor. So I can pretty much like, you know, change things however I want, save it, exit, I'm back here. And as you can see, it kind of did the editing for this one. So what, what, the place you write your prompts essentially can be inside of Vim. You save it, you're back here, and then you have a full prompt essentially. So if you press enter, it's not working and it will kind of write all the code you want to write. It also tells you like how much money you're spending on it. So you see here it's like 0 0.04, 0 0.5, whatever. Obviously this example is quite simple and it's not really realistic, but it shows you what's doing in real time. And when you're done, you can control C twice and then open up this code and voila, it's here. So another thing I did here and uh, let me show you, if I open up Tmux, I have these two lines here, and this is essentially so I can open up open code inside of a pop-up using Tmux. And so if I press the prefix and O, you see that I have this kind of in front of me and it's already pointing out to like the correct um, directory I'm in, and I can just use it this way as well. So if I go back here, open up Vim and open up main, for example, and prefix O, and let's say I want to you know, write a package or write a, you know, package for logging, for example. And I press enter, I start working on it. And as soon as it's done, I can just switch back to my Vim without really having to switch context or exit Vim in the first place. Um, this is obviously a very simple example as well. Probably I won't be doing this. In practice, you should probably write a lot of details before you press enter so you can save the most money and then have it write the most amount of code for you. Uh, this will cost me more than usual, as you can see here. But I'm just demoing it right now. As you can see, it's going through the planning, the tasks, and all that stuff. So if I go back to my browser here, um, you can also add rules similar to like cursor. Um, you can just add cloud.md and here's an example that they have here. And this can live inside um, either config open code agent if you want it to be global or inside your project as in like agent.md and that would work as well. You can also have some custom configuration and you can obviously integrate with MCP servers. That's also something they have here. And yeah, there's a lot of uh, different things you should look at here. Anyways, let's go back to our terminal. Notice here that I think it's done. Yep. So if I exit this, and I open up this guy, you see we already have our code. So that's like a nice workflow. And all I have to do is just prefix O, and then I'm back to here, and then prefix um, control C, control C twice, and then you exit that. You can change the key maps if you want to have like something other than control C, control C, that's fine. But that's like how I've been using it. Now, there's another option, obviously, I can simply open up like a, a split here. I have to be in the same directory, like this one, and I can just say open code. And now uh, all I have to do is just switch between the two, right? So I can, you know, the normal workflow. I have like a split here for this thing and another split for my editor. And, you know, here I can just 
do anything I want essentially and just code and if I want to change something I can jump back here and if you press add here or put add here you can essentially specify what file you want to use so let's say I don't know here and then say like you know delete this file we don't need it right press enter it will remove it and so this would be a nice workflow uh, it's probably more familiar if you've been using cursor and yeah so I can jump back here obviously it's remo it removed it for us and you can go on with this and uh, now I'm kind of zoomed in here so ideally these things won't look that big you know, it will look a bit smaller and it will be you can see more code but this is how it can look I'm finding that this actually would be the kind of the best solution for me like that this pop-up here and then when you're done you just exit um, so yeah this is a very interesting workflow I think I'm going to be using this for a while um, I'm also still torn between this cloud code thing I think it's fantastic and they have a lot of cool things and if you know cloud code kept keep improving and they keep building some amazing things and essentially if anthropic models stay like at the top then cloud code is something you might want to consider but you never know we have now like xai as well which is um, it seems to be one of the best as well but for a terminal based workflow i think open code with neovim might be the ultimate solution um, open code is really meant for neovim developer in my opinion I, even like the, the developers behind it um, mentioned that they had this in mind when they built it so that gives me hope that they're going to keep adding things that make it even more compatible and more familiar with, uh, you know, with Neovim. So, yeah, I just want to talk about this. I think it's pretty straightforward, the idea. Uh, it's not like this breakthrough thing. But for me, this is a way to replace this whole cursor, jet brain, whatever thing that I've been trying to dabble with to figure out how to use AI correctly. This has been like a fantastic option for me. And I'm very thankful they did this because now I can go back working with Neovim full-time. So yeah, if I go back actually to my Neovim config, a few things changed here. Um, obviously I have a bunch of AI stuff here that I used to have before. Uh, as you can see here, I tried Code Companion, Avante. I even tried also Copilot. I tried a bunch of stuff. They worked pretty nicely, but I think this other workflow is probably the best out there. And yeah, if you haven't checked it out, just yet i would recommend you try it and let me know what you think about it that's all i wanted to share and so yeah i'll see you in the next one